Well, here I am throwing up a video on threading. Um, just realized that the Handy has got some unique features, so I thought I'd just do a quick video. Right here I'm setting the, the cross-feed locking rod. The rod comes out, it's got a little hook that swings up and locks it, so you can go back to your zero position with the cross slide without having to uh, look at the gauge or you know I, I usually zero it just as just in case but uh, you don't have to look at it and then uh, as per Keith Fenner I started using the uh, dashboard gauge as he calls it for the compound so you've got a so you can see your actual uh, feed depth so here I am getting ready to cut a big to I can't remember what the thread is now. It's like an inch and a quarter thread. But so here you can see I, with my right hand, I'm pulling up on the lead screw reversing lever. So here it's engaging into forward. And when I get to the end of the thread, I pull it into reverse and it backs the cat carriage back to the beginning. And so with the Hendy, there there is no need to disengage the half nuts. I've actually, I've got a threading dial on the carriage, but I've never used it. So at the back of the cut, I just feed in until you can see the stop rod on the cross feed hitting. And then back it out to reverse. While I'm backing up, I feed the compound in about, at the beginning, I usually go 10 thousandths. And then as I get deeper into the cut, I go 5 thousandths. But, um, and again, like I said, the half nuts are not disengaged. It's just a matter of reversing the lead screw at the beginning or when you get to the shoulder or the end of the thread. The reason I wanted to put this video up is I noticed a few people <clears throat> lately have had lathes with the reversing lead screw. Uh, Keith Rucker comes to mind, The new, some of the new lathes he's got look, appear to me to have a reversing lead screw. And uh, the threading style is a little bit different than on traditional lathes where you disengage and engage the half nuts. For short threads, like the one I'm cutting here on this spindle nose, it, uh, the reversing lead screw is really quick. It, I suspect on long threads, um, it'll be quicker to disengage the half nuts and crank the carriage back by hand in order to uh, cut the thread. But on, on shorter threads, um, like I typically do, it, the reversing lead screw makes go really quick. I was going to put this video up at... Uh, full speed but it got too boring for even me the actual I, f I looked at the video the actual video time with the to cut the thread and to check it and all the things that I did on it the actual threading time was 24 minutes um, to get the whole the whole thing done and ready to get the part mounted on it I guess I should say the actual machining time was 24 minutes. Um, here I'm just backing the carriage back to try and fit the core barrel. It's a 14 inch segment of diamond core barrel that I use for coring through concrete and asphalt to set monitoring wells um, for work and needed a swivel, a water swivel, because you need to inject water down through the center of the core barrel to wash the cuttings out and um, nobody really makes one that fits what I need to do, so I thought I'd make my own. Um, the material I'm using here is a 17-5 stainless steel. Um, that's a type of stainless steel. It's slightly magnetic, or, you know, it's, it'll, a magnet will stick to it a little bit, but it does seem to be really resistant to uh, corrosion. And it's held up real well. Normally the part that you're fitting up to test the fit of the thread isn't quite as big and bulky as this and uh, doesn't require me to pull the carriage back quite so far. I 
going to try and there's a link to an old video from I believe it was during World War II that was uh, produced to I don't know it was one of those training videos but it's it was pretty basic but it, uh, it shows an operator running it, cutting a thread on a Hendy lathe a beautiful lathe with brand shiny new which mine is a long ways away from being shiny new since it was built in uh, 1943 during the war uh, talking to the the gentleman on Praco Machinist who has the the drawings and parts for these old handy lathes um, I was talking to him how the uh, compound doesn't appear to have been painted originally and he said that was that was common during the war that the whole machines or parts of machines wouldn't get painted and I guess sometimes they'd have a tag on it that would say war finish because they were all allowed to do that because of the war to I guess so people would know why they did it is done. Get that core barrel to fit. Seems like they're, uh, I guess because they're welded together, there's some variability in them from the uh, different core barrels I've gotten over the years. So here's the, the final passes to get things to size. I think they were, uh, as I recall, they were sp just spring passes without any, without feeding the compound anymore. You see that stop rod does a really nice job of getting you back into position on the uh, cross feed. Taking so many spring passes. The other nice thing on the handy is you can see as it gets to the end of its end of the travel, there's a stops you can set that limit the carriage travel. There's set stops at either end of the travel, and then there's movable stops that you can set at uh, different places along the along the uh, travel of the compound. There's a a rod down below the lead screw you can see in the lower part of the frame that, uh, that runs the stops. Basically, it disengages the lead screw, so you can use it as a threading stop. It will stop the uh, feed of the along the lead screw. So here's the final fit up. For some reason, I didn't tighten it down all the way on the thread yet. It's a little bit of a gap. There's a small shoulder that registers to the inside of the threads on the core barrel. You can see the segments the core barrel and there it is. 
ready to go. I suspect all that welding in there is why the there's some variability from one to the other. There, I finally get smart and put the lathe in back gear so I can get it snugged all the way up. Got another video that shows the whole process of making the whole spindle, including the milling the flats for the hydraulic drive and cutting the grooves for the uh, snap rings and the O-rings and everything that allow the water to come in from the side and then go down through the center of the core barrel. So feel free to take a look if you feel like it. Thanks for watching.